I'm using an infrared keypad to control these LEDs. When I press 1, the red light comes on. When I press 2, the green. And 3 gives me the blue one. If I press play, I get a little sequence of running lights. And if one of the lights is on and I press 0, it goes off again. It's just like the remote controls we're all familiar with for TV and other devices. And it works by sending a different numeric code each time you press one of the buttons. These small and low cost keypad and receiver kits can be used to control just about anything from home automation to projects that are too small to have buttons or that are just more convenient to control remotely. In this video, I'm going to run through how to set one up and how to control a project using these three LED lights as an example. I'll show the components needed, how to connect them up and the essential code needed to control your project with an Arduino. The next step is to have a look at what's needed for the project. As well as the infrared kit, which includes a keypad transmitter, diode receiver and optional breakout board, I also need a microcontroller to decode the signals and activate the project. And for this, I'm going to use an Arduino Nano. I may also need a pull-up resistor for the receiver, depending on whether or not I use the breakout board. I need three LEDs, red, green and blue, current limiting resistors for the LEDs, a breadboard to put everything on, and some connectors to join the circuit together. And here I will probably use a mixture of breadboard jumper leads and ready cut breadboard wires from a box set. Now I have it all together, let's wire up the circuit. Firstly, I'll put the Arduino Nano into the breadboard in a convenient place for the USB lead to be attached. I'll need to draw power from the Arduino, so I'll join the ground and 5 volt pins of the board to the ground and live rails of the breadboard. This will give me power and ground for the VCC, or voltage in, connection of the receiver diode. The signal pin of the receiver diode needs to be connected to an Arduino input pin. I've chosen pin 12 and will need to put this into my code. The signal pin goes low when it receives data, so when it's idle it needs to be pulled high using a 10k resistor from the voltage line. Alternatively, I could use the breakout board. This already has a pull-up resistor included, as well as an LED activity light. The diode just plugs into the socket on the board, and I found it helped to carefully use pliers to gently grip the leads and keep them straight and firm. The board then connects to a breadboard or PCB using a set of leads. Now I have the receiver ready to run, I'll set up my LEDs. Firstly, I'll put them on the board and then add current limiting resistors between each LED and ground. The three colours each need a separate Arduino output pin. I've chosen pins 2, 3 and 4, mainly because they're the nearest on the breadboard, and I've used colour matched wires to make it easier to follow. Now the components are all in place, let's have a look at what's needed for the software. To use the keypad and receiver with Arduino and with other similar boards, you will need to check if you have a software library installed or if you need to download one. For my Arduino setup, I used the Z3T0 Arduino IR Remote Library available on GitHub. I'll put a link to this in the description of this video. Just download the zip file, extract the library folder and install it. You can do this on a PC by copying the unzipped file to your Arduino Libraries folder or you can use commands in the Arduino IDE to install or manage libraries. Now I have the library installed, let's look at the essential code that's needed to use infrared input from a keypad. To use the functionality of the library, I need to use the include command at the beginning of my Arduino sketch. Arduino programs, known as sketches, have three main parts. Essential information at the start, followed by a setup section, and then a loop section where the action happens. In the opening section of this sketch, I'm going to declare one of the Arduino pins to be the input for the receiver, in this case pin 12, and then variables which access information from the IR remote library and input from the pin. I'm then going to set up three integers to hold the numbers of the LED output pins, 2, 3 and 4. In the setup section, the first line enables the input from the infrared receiver and the next line, which says blink 13, tells the built-in LED on the board to flash when infrared activity is detected by the receiver. An external LED connected to pin 13 will make this more obvious and can be helpful for testing. I then need to set the three LED pins to be digital outputs. When I'm working on a new project, 
I often add a sequence into the setup section of the sketch to demonstrate that the hardware is properly connected. In this case, that means flashing each LED on and off. And of course, this can be removed when the project is up and running. There are two other essential lines of code that need to top and tail the loop section. An if statement tests if data is being received and decoded by the receiver. And if it is, it puts that number into the variable called results. Inside the curly brackets of this statement, I can put any actions that I want to happen. When that's finished, the last instruction before the loop goes back to the beginning is resume, telling the sketch to start looking for infrared data input again. Now I have an outline sketch ready to act on keypad presses that are received, I can put some actions into the loop section of the sketch. I want to have several possibilities, and the easiest way to choose options is by using if statements or switch case statements. For this example, I've chosen to use cases. A switch is based on the numeric value of the variable called results. And then if any of the cases match this, then their actions will be put into effect. In the first three cases, if the button number matches, one LED is switched on and the other two are turned off. If the play pause button code number is detected, the case runs a function, which is what Arduino calls a subprogram or subroutine, and this lights the LEDs in a sequence. In the last case, detecting button zero sets all the LEDs to low so that they're off. After the switch statement, the loop repeats, having been reminded to look again for infrared input. There's information about using these infrared keypads and receiver diodes on our website, q26.co.uk. And this includes the number codes for the individual buttons on the keypad and sample sketches for Arduino. You can use a different keypad by running a sketch to detect the button codes, and this is also available on our website. Here's an example of how useful this kind of control can be. We sell a lot of seven segment displays, and I wanted to be able to test them quickly and easily. So I made this tester and control it with an infrared keypad. I can switch the connections to light up any number of digits with common cathode or common anode without any rewiring. And if I stock a differently configured display, and it's easy just to rewrite the Arduino code and allocate a keypad number to it. So, I hope you found this demonstration useful and it will help us if you like the video and subscribe to our channel. I'll be making more videos and uploading them more regularly from now on, so if you want to be kept informed as to when they're available to view, please click the bell icon. As ever, all the parts and loads of information about our video projects are available on our website, q26.co.uk. Thanks for watching, I'll be back with more soon.